me, I was saying that we, we had the pleasure of uh, sharing a cab ride, which was great. And uh, I know I surprised you um, when, I, when I grabbed you in the hotel. So I just, um, I've admired you from afar. Oh, wow. and, uh, and I'm so anxious uh, to hear anything you have to share with us. So again, the floor is yours. Wow. Um, well, first of all, good morning from sunny California, everybody. Um, I'm humbled. I'm humbled um, to hear you say that, that you admired me because I, I, I just think I'm a, I'm a longtime girl in Keller Williams that just lives my life and just, you know, I do the things that I feel are correct and appropriate and gives me the ability every day to look in the mirror and say, yep, I still like you. So I'm humbled by that. I thank you for that. Um, I also don't know if it's anything extraordinary that I can share. So I'll just share from the heart, if that's okay. Um, same thing I told our KW family in Athens. I don't know if you understand me, so I'll just go with this. Um, you know, I did have uh, the pleasure of kind of seeing what other great um, contributors have shared with you. And I was like, currently, I don't run a huge business, yet I run a ho an office. I'm growing a team, if you will. Um, I've had the pleasure of being an agent that was at the very beginning of our growth in 2003, back when you could still kind of tap in Dave Jinx. I have the autographed copy of the MREA from him. And you could literally just walk up to family reunion and pay for like half a day, like from that era and from the Keller Who era to um, that big growth spurt during the last market major shift, right? 08 to, to 10, where our, we grew exponentially. And now I feel like, um, uh, you know, I have the pleasure of being a KW agent during what I consider our third generation, if you will. So um, someone asked me a while ago, um, if I could do anything in this company or anything in this space, what would it be? And I think I, my dream, my goal, I think my mission is to tell the story of us and to encourage folks to really connect to the story of us and why we are different because the time that we're selling into right now, I think clarity of connectedness is what will, will be a strong anchor, right? Um, I was struggling with, again, how do I give great advice or what do I share? And as usual, I wake up to some inspiration. I saw this funny cartoon. It had two images in it. And it was, a, um, if you think back to like two lines, like if you're getting in line to buy something and one sign said, hungry to win. And you could imagine it was a long line of people snaked around. And then the second line was willing to do the things to win. Poor guy, looked like the Maytag repairman, nobody in that line. And I laughed and I said, yup, <laughs> let's talk about it. Well, I have a cheat code for you. Um, probably will be unexpected, I hope it will be. The cheat code is choose you. That's the cheat code, choose you. Now, I'm not saying from a narcissistic, oh, it's all about me and I'm gonna get mine and what I want. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm telling you the cheat code is choose you. Whether in business, whether personal, choose you. So let's talk about business so I can spend a little extra time on the personal because I think we don't talk about that enough, particularly in this business. Obviously, I'm talking to ALC members, right? People who are at the top, um, in the office, in the company. So you already are, are running great businesses, but sometimes we need a reminder. Sometimes that choose me is um, being okay with somebody is not happy because you said, no, I don't, I don't got a minute. I'm focused now <laughs> on this lead gen time. I'm protecting the goals that I set for my family, my life, or what have you. Fun story. I've always been the person that you couldn't ask me, how much money do I wanna make? I couldn't say that number, it just seemed weird. I never talked like that. It was always about the do. But on my recent trip, um, I was in Greece doing living life Vita La Momo. And um, all of a sudden it hit me what Gary's been saying this whole time about money is good for the good it can do. And 
you don't know how much money you're going to need. And that is because while we were in Austin for mega camp, I got a text message that there was an ambulance in the front of my mother's house. And as I'm at mega camp and I'm screaming on the phone, mommy, get in the ambulance, mommy, do whatever, but she didn't, it's hard headed. Um, you know, all panic broke out, what have you. She's fine now, she's on the road to recovery, but that was scary. Um, even the idea of continuing and taking my trip to Greece, even though I knew my mother's here, we have some things to put into place for her care. That was a choose me moment. And I'll get back to that. I'm thinking on the plane because I had 10 hours of no Wi-Fi. Who does that on a plane? No Wi-Fi. Couldn't even buy it. That's crazy. Um, and I'm thinking, and I'm like, this is what Gary's talking about. I'm at this point in my life where all those times that I put my business first, that I paid attention to wealth building, that I paid attention to making as much, doing as many deals, impacting as many um, PC agents that I could. In this moment, it became clear why it was important that I did what I did when I did it, because now I might be paying cash out on stuff. I had to put place people in places in position so I could continue on my trip. And the trip wasn't selfish. Yeah, I would have lost a lot of money if I didn't go. But I also understand that my mommy, because I'm an only child and her only family, needs me to be the best I can be in order to help her have the best life she can. Mm. It was the hardest choose me decision I ever made because I could hear the judgment. I could feel it. <laughs> I, number one, why I didn't just drop everything and spend $10,000 to come home. Well, that wouldn't have made sense because nothing I could do. And then to leave right after that. And I just, I, I work from that mantra of when I say choose you, I live it every day. Now, let me tell you where that came from. A lot of folks, you wouldn't know this, Ben, seven years ago, I, I almost didn't make it to 50. I just turned 57 uh, Sunday. I almost didn't make it. I had a big business, two, three phones. I'm running, I'm running, running, running. You know how they tell us you have to do 24 seven, all these things, we, our clients first, nothing matters, sell, sell, sell. And, um, but I've always loved vacation. So what I could do, I had tricked myself. I would go hard, 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 hard for 12 weeks. Everybody else first, every client first, every situation first. I would go hard, but I knew I had a vacation coming. So that would be like the carrot that was pulling me around. So I had a vacation to New York. I was dating a guy in New York, had it coming. It was going to be a fabulous birthday thing. Oh, yachts, everything, trust. I'm expensive even when I'm spending the money. And I had this pain fresh out of an ALC meeting. I had gone to the salad bar. I wanted a hamburger, but you know, I was trying to be, you know, cute for the pictures. So I had to salad bar and all of a sudden I had this pain. So the first thing I did was because I'm in addition to be a top agent, I'm a part-time doctor. <laughs> I decided that little Timmy's nasty hands at the salad bar had given me food poisoning. Eh, let it run through. Talk amongst yourself. And, <laughs> and I had this pain that was excruciating. But I was going on my vacation. They were not taking this from me. I didn't choose me. I said I was choosing me. I didn't choose me because I didn't listen to the signs. Fast forward, you remember that year where it was all the snow in Boston and New York was shut down and all of that. That's, I was there in that. <laughs> I still got on a plane, a, a plane that, that's funny, my phone says, I didn't understand that. I still don't either, seven years later. A, a, a plane ticket that I had spent a lot of money for and I slept the whole time. And I got there and I was stuck and I was sick. I didn't know what was happening. I'll fast track it for you. Something told me I woke up one morning and it said, fool, if you don't go home, you're not going to make it. But I was there because I was running away from the hard work life. I was running away from the stress. This was my reward for all the crap I had sent myself through. You get that? See that? So it kind of made sense on a really silly level. Anyway, I, I've learned in my life to listen when the angels are talking to you. So I did what I had to do, got back to LA. Um, within half a day, they had me in emergency surgery. I had appendicitis. 
And while God takes care of babies and fools, and I know I look very youthful, but I'm not a baby, I probably shouldn't have been here less for still have work to do because I have been walking around with, for seven days with that poison in my body. Yeah. And when the doctor, and still, still I'm in ER with the fluid now on me and I'm on the phone because I have my first million dollars. <laughs> listen, give me what you need to give me. Little Timmy, get, hey, listen, antibiotics, whatever. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing deals. It was ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, and the doctor the next day came to me and said, do you realize you had less than half a day to live? I said, really? I said, well, hold, look, look, hold on. This agent is calling me back about a showing. Still crazy, still crazy, still crazy. It was six months later that I had the guts to read the reports, sobering. Because now I'm reading everything that's going on with me. Now I'm reading what could have happened. Now it's not funny. Now I'm in tears because, not because, I got sick, it's appendicitis. There's no rhyme or reason for that. But because I was so focused on the, <clears throat> the grind that I didn't listen to me. I didn't listen to my body. I, was I successful financially? Absolutely. Was I revered in the city? Absolutely. All the things that we say we want, I had all of that, but I didn't choose me. So for, at age 49, I made a decision. Everything is through the prism of, is this serving me? Is this serving me? Sometimes that is a, yes, I would love to help. And sometimes it's, you know what? I can't take that on right now. And by the way, hashtag no is a complete sentence. I'm just sharing. I because can... here, <laughs> here's the reality. Again, I, I'm, I'm just sharing, I'm talking to myself out loud. I'm an only child and I wasn't blessed with children. They were in heaven, they didn't trust me. I don't know why, I would have been a groovy mom. I have to rely on being the best me 20 years later. And I, in the course of the last few years, I understand everybody, if you think like that, you are in addition to putting money aside for the life you want, you also wanna be of great spiritual, mental and physical capacity. You wanna really live your best life on all cylinders, right? Well, because I don't have a daughter like me at 57, I have to be the daughter to the 77 year old me. Cause I plan to be real cute like Lola Falana, real cute, great legs, still dancing, doing all of that, right? And I know it's possible because my daddy is 88 and he has an 83 year old girlfriend and they hang out and have more fun than I do. So I have the example. Let me say this, <laughs> we are entering a season for those who went through the shift before, you already know it's gonna be a little shaky but it doesn't, stuff doesn't fold. Buyers buy and sellers sell every day. The news will tell you that, uh, oh, the market is down. Down is relative. Okay, so it's not 5,000 transactions, it's 3,500. <laughs> okay, right? We know it gets a little rocky. For those who have never been through it, it's gonna get a little rocky, but it still is just it. People transfer title every day. Do not allow yourself to get all loopy and crazy. Stick to the, what do we say in Kato? The basics. It is simple. This is a con tag sport. If you are about deepening your relationships, then you don't have to worry about running around being crusty to realtor or when everybody is spinning like a spinning top is crazy. If you anchor to the value, our wall of value, um, what we offer in terms of a culture, in terms of KW, that will help you because guess whose phone is about to ring a lot too? Who are you going to feel so popular? There's going to be a lot of lunches, a lot of talking, a lot of and here's the thing, I dare say, and I am profit share queen. If at any time you have to make a decision for your business, and it's really a decision for your business, not because somebody is selling you the new, latest, greatest, it sounds fancy thing, you do what you have to do. Because remember I said, choose you. Choose you. I, I will tell you that um, from experience, 
for those who haven't been with us a long time, or maybe you were in the grind and weren't as tight to, again, the wall of value, what we offer as a culture and all of that. If you haven't experienced it on a high level, I will tell you in 19 years, the thing that I am most pleased about with Keller Williams, and I had the opportunity recently to tell Gary to his face, everything they promised they would do to protect us as business people, as agents running our own businesses, they have done. I stand on that square. I stand on that square because there will be changes. There will be decisions. There will be choices that you'll be like, wait a minute, what? I'm telling you, it's not a blind faith that a lot of us have that have been here is that we've seen that they worry about the things that, um, that need to be worried about on a high level so, so we can focus on our lives, our businesses, our families. But again, the cheat code is choose you. Choose to eat well. How, heck, choose to eat, okay? Because don't play with me. I know what happens. I know what happens. Get up and start running. You ain't eat. Is that choosing you? Let me help you. No. Choose to take care of your body. Man, I don't have time. Listen, grease wore me out. I swear, I think I lost two kilograms and my butt is like when I was 25, walking all those hills. Nobody warned me. I'm talking to myself now because that's where my, my gap has showed up. I haven't taken care of my body on the highest level. You don't have to do a whole lot. You're not putting jazzercise outfits on. I'm dating myself and doing a bunch of stuff. Just something. Choose you. Choose to be with people that you love and uplift you. Don't be confused. There's some people I like a lot, but every time I open my mouth, negative. I've had to cut, not cut ties, but with people that I would go to war for. But I, they can't be in this season right now. Why? Because I choose me. Whose face lights up when they see you? Be about more of that. Um, my, my very first team leader and mentor, Sean Rawls, I don't know if you've heard of him. Absolutely. You, I was blessed to have him. That was my first TL in Atlanta. He used, to, he used to tell us, and I'll leave you with this in terms of people. People either add, subtract, multiply or divide in your life. Now, the first part is easy. If they're subtracting and dividing, that's easy. Here's where it becomes the challenge. Plus is cute. I'm looking at us. We're all in the season. People should be bringing in and multiplying more joy, more laughter, more business, more support, more connectedness, more everything. Choose you. That's the cheat code. Choose you. That's all I got, unless you got something there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all you got, sweetheart. I, my, I don't know. My slogan is, I bring the meat every week. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you have, you've, dropped, you've dropped nuggets and bombs on us this morning that um, uh, I, I think this is exactly what we needed to hear. And I hope that my connection is okay that you guys can hear me because I, I I'm I'm impressed even more. Uh, I, your word was so powerful, and and I think that um, th there are no coincidences in this world at all. The way I think, and uh, and I think that our meeting um, was fortuitous. It was exactly what I needed, what we needed to hear. And I want you to keep um, inspiring because, again, you didn't even know Ben Baker until a month ago. And I tell people all the time that we never know who we're inspiring. And uh, so just, just continue to choose you, do the right thing, do the next right thing, um, and, and things take care of themselves. So uh, know that if there is anything you ever need in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, feel free to shout on me all day, every day, and I got you. And I let me you. just give you all this. My mom's from Dallas. Oh, Raised wow. over by Fair Park. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Maybe I'll be in Dallas. I have one auntie there and a bunch of cousins. I tend to come and slide in. Next time I come in town, though, maybe let's, let's, let's chop it up. 
Yeah, whoever's around, let's grab some lunch. I am I am a, akin to Papa Do's, but you know, it could be wherever. <laughs> I got you. I got you. And I'll I'll take care of it. And uh and I've got some friends on here that are like, what? Ben Baker's gonna pay for lunch? <laughs> You don't have I, to, I, but I ain't gonna say no. <laughs> yes, I will for you. I will for you. And yeah, I don't normally say no when folks uh, want to take me out. So, yeah. Kelly Jane, there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. There you go. Never in the Guys, block your blessing business. Never in the block your blessing business. Doesn't pay. Right. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. Uh, again, uh, let's go. Um, let's go change uh, and 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 impact someone's life today. And again, I, I appreciate you uh, sharing that. And, and guys, guys, go choose, choose you, which was so powerful. And uh, let's make it a great day. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you for having me. Take care, everyone. Go be great. Bye. Bye.